Hello, and welcome to Blackfeather Guild. Before we go in and say hi to the cast and get started with the show, I wanted to talk very briefly about viewer actions uh, and a little bit about sponsors. Uh, so first off, there's a number of ways that you can actually uh, actively participate in the show uh, through viewer actions. One of the easiest ways to do so is through retweeting the game tweet. Uh, you should see that somewhere in chat if it's not in there already. Uh, but you just click on that link and hit retweet. And for every five retweets uh, that we get on that, uh, it will add a bonus to the cast pool and the game master pool. Uh, now, in most cases, that's going to be an extra D6 that they can add on to any role. Uh, basically, uh, a great way to use that is if a, a player is uh, almost meeting a DC, but they're just not quite there, they can grab one of those D6s from the cast pool, roll that, and then add that to their role. Basically, is how that works. Same with the GM. Um, so that's one of the easiest ways that you can participate uh, that way. Another way is through Guild Coins. That's our Twitch channel points. If you look at the uh, rainbow-colored icon, it should have the uh, Black Feather Guild crest on it. Uh, it should be right below your Twitch chat box. Uh, if you click on that, it will show you all the different things that you can get with those, uh, the biggest one being plot points. Uh, now, plot points, uh, you can see an example right over here. Uh, they all work pretty much the same way. It's just a matter of how big of an impact they have. Uh, so for the example, when we've got two plot points, the player of your choice gets something moderately helpful or unhelpful. Enter any suggestions for the GM uh, into chat, or you can have the GM come up with something entirely on their own. Um, so just choose if you want it to be helpful or unhelpful to the party, um, and that's kind of how you can use them. You can throw in your own suggestions as well. Uh, how those work, one plot point is something you know trivially helpful or unhelpful, two is moderately, three is very, and four is very to the entire party. Um, so if you want to do something to help the entire party or really throw a monkey wrench in their plans, um, four plot points will do that. Um, so that's guild coins. And then finally, we've got donations. So if you want to help out uh, with keeping the lights on in the place, so to speak, uh, there's a number of ways that you can financially contribute. One of those being uh, coffee.com slash raven or raven.rocks. You can see both of those examples down there at the bottom. Uh, those are the addresses to do direct donations. You can also do Twitch subscriptions or bits. Uh, those work the same way. And then finally, Patreon. We've got a Patreon, which you should see in chat here any second if it's not there already. And uh, our Bard tier patrons and higher get credits towards viewer actions every month that they can use on any show that they would like. Um, you just have to let us know in chat uh, how you want to spend those, and then we'll uh, hand those out. So some very cool stuff. Before we uh, hop over to see the cast, um, one last thing to mention is a couple things on this chart here. Uh, we've already covered the D6 and the plot points, but the triple crits, what that means is you can gift uh, auto-critical successes. Uh, and you can it's triple because you get three. You can divvy those out however you'd like. Uh, you can do two to the cast, one to the game master, all of them to the game master, however you want to do it. Um, so they work much like the D6s. Uh, the cast members just grab that when they're available and they really need them and use them. So it's pretty cool. And then finally, the last one, introduce an ally or enemy NPC. Just give us a brief description of what you want this character to look like, uh, kind of their, their character concept and a name, and let us know if you want it to be an enemy or an ally to the party, and the GM will basically take that and run with it. Um, so really cool ways that you can participate. Lastly, I uh, just want to take a quick moment to mention our sponsors. If you look at the logos down below, that's who's sponsoring this episode. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, before we introduce everybody as well uh, on the next scene. Um, so yeah, check all this stuff out and, uh, and thank them for supporting us. And thank you for being here and watching. Let's go say hi to the cast. Hello there, and thank you for the introduction, Raven. Before we get into the game, we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, uh, Grinding Coffee Company and Fun Demental RPG. Be sure to check out uh, co grindingcoffee.co and use the code Raven, R-A-V-V-Y-N, for 13% off all your orders. Um, and... Unfortunately, uh, this week, uh, because of internet woes, uh, 
Sassy isn't here. Hopefully, maybe I'll get fixed and come in. But if not, send all the good wishes and all that to them. Hopefully, they able to deal with it. Uh, they, I'd like to introduce you to our cast again. Uh, let's starting with uh, our great Otto. Hi, I'm Eshi. Uh, I don't really do much online. You can find me here. I play Otto, the troublemaking changeling uh, wild sorcerer. Uh, here to stir the pot, make some craziness. Thank you very much. Uh, then off to our, our resident barbarian. Hi, I'm Plar. I play Jin, the pretty much pretty serious and uh, bodyguard type. He is a Earth Genasi barbarian. Just here to uh, protect the group and keep them out of the fire. Thank you very much. Uh, now, as uh, we go on through today, uh, we will be uh, using a bit of from a module from Unbraidled, called, uh, which you can find on DM's Guild. It is a anthology with a lot of unicorns and, and unicorn-based things. Worth checking out if you haven't already. Now, as we begin this week's episode, uh, you know, start off uh, with both Otto and and Jen talking to Snicklesocks as having very really bruises that look like fins on their face. Going, okay then, so it looks like you guys are going on a mission to help a hack? Uh, goodness disinclined individual. I did not agree to a single thing. Which was a good choice. Plausible deniability is only going to help us here. Okay, so what am I going to be telling BB then? Because I, I, this seems a little bit off your you know, beaten path of your normal traveling stuff. Like, you should tell him that Otto went rogue, and I want to save his ass. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But uh, I'll have that as a possible deniability. But there's that, a there's a tournament. There's a tournament. Where we're going. They do the, the fighting. Right. You're going to Greenblade? That, that seems very highly suspicious. Like, that's not for a couple of months, I think, or weeks at the very least. Well, you know, you got to get the, the pre fight promo going. You got to let people know where the fighters are at and increase be uh, gambling revenues. Scouting. Yeah, like when you actually turn in your, your story, I gotta at least have it make it look like, oh, this was the purpose. So is that the story you plan to be when you're done with this? Snickle sucks. Are you, are you doubting my ability to spin a story? No. I want to be able to have my story straight so I don't get fired. Don't, don't, wor don't worry about it. I, it, I need the, a story the, to the go turn, on. The tournaments, it'll play a major role. It'll be it'll be background things. Only subtle, only subtle. With the, the evil folk. Again. I already got that. Uh, everyone's already talking about the carrier trout. Okay. Like, I'm not going to be able to hide it that well. I still don't believe it myself. And I touched the damn fish. and got slapped by the damn fish. 
you know what? Blame me. Everybody in town knows I'm a wild mage. Things go crazy. Sometimes get a little out of hand. You know, things get That's, wild. Yeah, I, I got that. But I just need to at least have BB say, when you hand in the story, oh, they've gone off to do such and such. Oh, that when you hand in the story, that lines up. So I get paid and you get paid. Don't worry about it. I've got this. I no just need a line. I just need. I, I just need you something. Have, you have. I can't. My I just need something to go with BB right now. That's all. We're doing that's promotional possible. work because there's some suspicion about legitimacy in the fighting at Greenblade. That's like, scandal. Think... That'll sell a story. Okay, if I'm not believing it. How the heck is BB gonna believe it? Well, you're I need a better, better salesman than I am. No, I am not. I You've am seen a my wallet. You've seen my wallet. You get more money in your pocket than I do. It probably doesn't help that most of it comes from you. But yeah. that really says more about you than it does about me. You're right, but again, I need story. Uh, there's, we're like covering the fighting. Would... There, there's, there's always lead up fights. We're, we're doing reconnaissance work. It'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna say you're, you're reconnaissance a hack. That good? Whatever you got to do to make the story happen. Okay, good enough. And then writes that down. Now, then pulls out another paper. Uh, you should be uh, when you go down to Penny eh, for your, uh, your gold. There should be at least uh, two gold down you for uh, the story. Like, it did well with circulations. Like, BB's throwing an extra gold, and and uh, you probably when you want to put in for your requisition there at the same time save you a lot bit more effort when you come back again to get your next paycheck. Otto kind of flaps their hand. Yeah, of course. I, I know the drill. We're, we're, we're good. You have the best knocks, socks. You, you oh, okay, business. okay. We'll get this job done today. Stories for the people. And then Otto is gone. Jen, feel free to slap him against the head once for me. All right. I'll get right on that, boss. Good job. You're a good man. You're a good man. Good man. <laughs> Sticklesoft goes off while I'm guessing you guys go down to uh, Penny and Pace. As you get into there, like you, this hallway is kind of very sterile and like much of the floor, up until you get to actually Penny's desk, which seems to have a lot more flair in comparison. It's like almost like they painted everything else with a bit of like that yellow sunshine, stars, and all this very brightness. It's very odd in contrast. And the and welcome. Hello there. How are you today? Penny, you're a ray of sunshine. I'm doing fantastic. So, Sock sent me down to get him his paycheck, as well as you know, pick up our our bit from the last story. You know, I'm gonna need a persuasion roll on that. Just one moment. I will give you, like, it's not a high DC. Oh my god! A nat one! Oof. Ah, well, unfortunately, Jin, I'm gonna have to penalize you for that, that fabrication. You know that 
You're not supposed to. That is quite oh, illegal. Penny, you know I'm joking. Is why would he send me down here to pick up his paycheck? Come on. Yeah. She just kind of her turns to Jin instead, and then goes, "I uh, here are two gold for you, and a gold for her." The bad liar. Sure. You're a kind soul, Penny. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm repentant. I, I'm, I'll i change my ways. I promise you. Really? Well, you know, time changes all things. Yeah. Tomorrow is another day. I might, I might come out a little better because of your influence. Thank you for your... your your generosity, Penny. Yeah, I'll believe that when you bring me some cheese whiz. You know, I. Uh, the I, know, no I don't knows. get along these days. Yeah. Okay, now, before I get into a bad mood, and you know how horrible that is, uh, uh, you haven't put in your requisitions yet? They, uh, they get me in any of that shift we've yet? Mm, I, I got at least a potential. I got it in there. Like, I got a dealer up there, there around the mountains. Like, got some dwarves that might be on to some interesting textiles, if you know what I mean. Well, you do what you can. You keep me informed. Okay. Uh, Jin, uh, you at least put it in the paperwork and figure... Or are you going to be sitting on that one for a good while? Well, I'm definitely sitting on it. I don't really have anything uh, I truly wish to have. Okay. And, and stamps the paperwork on uh, Jin's... Okay, uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, probably when you get come back with your latest story, maybe I'll have something for you. Now, before you take your leave, is there? And looks around. Any uh, juicy gossip you got for me? Hmm. So. I swear, I saw one of those dragon mark gnomes hurrying out of a bookstore the other day. I was going in to look for some wild magic information. He looked, he looked pretty upset. He had a, a book he was trying to tuck into his, his robe. Ooh, that is some juicy gossip. And looks around and then and places like a silver on the counter, like, don't tell nobody. Hey, you tell everybody. <laughs> and uh, lets you guys leave. This goes off to do additional paperwork. What would you like to do? Oh. Well, what do you think we should do, Otto? Hmm. Well, we could follow up on some more of that, uh, the information on that Blood Queen. It's still kind of stuck in my craw. There's, there's something not right about that. And the fact that apparently all of the histories and lies is uh, uh, disconcerting. Um, out of character, it was particularly that book about wild magic that was all lies. Yeah. Mm. Well... 
I don't know. Got time to kill before that hag comes calling? Yes, you do. I don't know. Any friends you want to visit? Uh, I'm not sure if anybody will have me right now. Last time we were in town, got a little hectic. Been trying to lay a little bit low this week. We could, uh, you want to go for a drink? Yeah, sure. Why not? I know a nice place. It's uh, just down the corner here. Oh, you do? I like to stay close to the, the shop. Never know when work's going to come in. I rarely, rarely get a drink. Uh, would you like me to describe it, or do you have something already in mind? Go for it. Okay. Uh, you end up like a tavern called Hole in the Wall, uh, which is very much trying to be you know, a very touristy place. Like, it fails because it's that they really do not understand what a lot of the dwarven community that's a part of, of the Chronicles and the area right now. So a lot of it is kind of like little things they think dwarves might know. Like, like small chairs that stack on each other and that way you can climb up if you're bigger or smaller on them with lots of miniature cakes and big and all of this is run by a three uh three cried i believe a very insect uh, very kind of like have mandibles think very much like a, a humanoid grasshopper that never sleeps that's always around there you know, for serving, even when like every other bar might be closed, they have either uh, alcohol for you, or they have coffee, or for the very dangerous, the ac- alcohol coffee. <laughs> so, Jin, you want to know the only reason this place is still open? Oh, what's that? Barkeep, can we get a, a seat in the back room? They call, it ah, the hole. It. they call it the hole in the wall because there's a hole in the wall that leads to the guild hall next door's back room. Oh, very and nice. That's why it's popular with journalists. Like, and the Thry Queen is just like attempts to wink as you pass by, but failing at doing so. Like, even with like half of its eyes are trying to, some half do it at one might succeed on it, but just closes and stays close as you walk by. Uh, I slip him the silver that I got from Penny. Yeah. The Thright Queen bites on it before it, or put it in their pouch. Uh, this being kind of like a bit of uh, uh, journalist headquarters this allows for you guys to always talk to hear like rumors around uh i'd like either like either a uh, perception or investigation to see if you can recognize anyone here because yeah. maybe it might be just that that someone you know isn't here so uh, Jin, would you like to try, or is this going to just be auto? Woo! Ooh. Okay. Very perceptive. Uh, uh, yeah. Otto, you might see kind of like a couple of uh, people that are actually kind of like angry, and you just kind of like duck out of the way so they don't catch you. But Jin, on the other hand, actually notices one of the oldest uh, journalist that has not been able to get outside of the horoscopes a dragonborn and like regardless of what they try to do like you can see kind of like they have like this very kind of like desert lizard like a very like 
brown with lots of reds with kind of like little paints uh, uh green near uh the eyelids and a lot of where like they can move first kind of like almost as if kind of like allow for like get to be able to blend right into any like dried out glass grass and such he goes Dead! okay hi hi now yeah, what's up not much outside the sky Right, yeah. Very true. It just kind of disappears into the corner of the booth, sipping at the ale. <sighs> How you been? Uh, I've been trying, like, you know the story. I, I try to get out of the horoscopes, but I write them too dang well. I keep trying to come up with investigation stories, like, for example, like there's some rumors about uh, uh, these vampiric elves sneaking around and getting scared off by a silver tooth cat. Wild. I know. And I bring this up. Does anyone want me to investigate? I got this great story, but no horoscopes. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, maybe that maybe that cat's actually a wear saber tooth cat. Yeah. Like where was, again. Where was this? The vampire elves. Well, I heard the rumor like it going out. Like uh, I think it was a little over near nowhere, like uh, over where like you got that that big area where those two like bits of the last war. You get those giant like war forges stuck clashed together like a little over in that area um, like i don't know much on it because again it's a rumor i don't know much about a rumor if it's even true or not interesting well i'll tell you what get a chance i'll check it out yeah uh, again, like, uh, weren't you up there no, not too long ago? Uh, uh, honestly, I don't really remember where we go. We uh, we were, actually. And uh, I know something about that cat. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. It'll be fine. Oh, come on. You gotta tell me. Come on. Uh, it's it's too soon. You got to verify things, check sources, look up. Uh, come on. You got to research the area. Uh, uh, come on. I need a way out of horoscopes. Come on. And, like, uh. and he starts to just get on his knees and almost, come on, please. I need a way out of horoscopes. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Otto leans in close. Hey, you didn't hear it from me, but... Look into the Blood Queen. What? Oh. Maybe they like gets a the pet. That's why they be scared. Interesting. There's there's forces in play. There's powers at work. We gotta look into it. Get back to me. We'll uh we'll share information. Um Looking into some things right now. I don't want to get too deep into it until I have more, but okay, keep your okay. eyes out. And gets off his knees and like dusts themselves off and like goes, oh man, I almost forgot, Jin. I owe you for that last bet I lost. And then starts scrunching around through their pockets and goes like, <laughs> and pulls out this bit bag. Okay, this should hold me off for a good while. Oh, like this right here. Here, bag of edibles. It, it looks like salt. You, sh you put it on whatever thing that you can't eat makes it edible. Right. You and your crazy stories. 
again, like I tr- I'm trying to get out of horoscopes. For forget, do either of you two want your horoscopes? No. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what what I am, so don't worry about it. Well, again, it's pretty easy. I can look at you and figure it out. My big problem is I'm too damn good at horoscopes. Oh, you, you're one of the, the, the diviners, eh? Yeah, A sure. little bit. Timmy, what you got? Okay. And then puts... Mm, I feel like at one point you will find a jaunty mustache yes when you would least expect it and be careful if you hand up with a pink glow anyone else that might not be very useful but thank you yeah, I know, because no one else would have to be worrying about a pink glow. Well, there you go. Horoscope in the bag. Pretty nice. Pretty great. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do while in the hole in the wall? Get myself up. A coffee with that mixed with a bit of alcohol start the day off well uh okay uh i would like a constitution roll sure uh constitution save where's that oh It's average, like, like you're f- fine, but it just isn't agreeing with you. Ever so often, like, it, you might have just like a little burp of flame. Burp of flame, Jesus! Oh, there was something else in that mix. Ne- never. I'm sorry. I should have warned you. You never get the coffee. They're, they. They do not. They do not know what they're doing with coffee here. It's. I don't even know why it's on the menu. I'm sorry. I, I gotta walk this off. I'll, uh, I'll come with you. I don't. It doesn't seem like there's going to be uh, too much else more exciting than that today. Uh, well, you always gotta have the slow days. Uh, and on the way out, I'm going to stop on the like next to one of the tables of uh, another journalist that is like not so happy with me. It'd be like peace offering, and then I'm going to cast suggestion and lean in close and say the gnomes are up to something. Oh my god. And he goes, yeah, when are they not up to something? Okay. Something big. Of Look course. into it. Of course they're up to something. That's every gnome. How is that useful? Look into it. Okay, okay. I don't, I'm always like, just mumbles off and uh, continues to drink. I don't know. What's happening? You know, it'd be fun actually if we go track down some sort of some sort of beast I could talk to. Ooh. Okay, that sounds like you want to make either a nature or a survival roll. Sure. I'll take nature because my wisdom's bad. Why not? Okay. Uh, as you're going out and about, uh, you find yourself noticing hey, a bit of crackles, like little crows that have been outside of the hole in the wall. Well, mm. 
It's a murder of crows. What are they doing here? Guess I shall find out by <laughs> using speak with animals. <laughs> and you hear them. I don't, know. I don't get why we're following them. They don't make no sense. Right? Right? I... What are you doing oh. here? Like, a couple of them just fly off scared that you can actually speak to them. Well, j there's just one like there's going. You got something shiny? Do I have something shiny? Uh, help me out here. Uh, help me out here, Otto. Otto, Otto uh, fishes out a copper piece and hands it over. And it's shiny. That's brown. That's brown. Not shiny. That's no, no. I cast press to digitation on it. Ah, ah, shiny, shiny. Then goes. Mm. <laughs> well, it's supposed to follow, follow you. Follow me. Yeah, mm. yeah. Interesting. What are yeah. you doing here? What were you just talking about? Supposedly, you know, hag. You know, hag. Yeah. Oh boy, this hag keeps coming up everywhere. What's going on? Yeah, we know of her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, forget about her. <laughs> what? Why? Bad news. Bad news. That's why I'm supposed to follow you. Yeah. Oh, someone sent you to follow us. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We might be fine though. It's just one hag, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. One hag. And then just flutters away. What? All right. Guess our conversation's over. Oh no. I don't know. I think someone's spying on us. They don't want us uh, to help this hag. The crows have eyes, if you know what I mean. I can't say I'm terribly surprised. M messing around with hags and demons, it, it doesn't, doesn't usually end well, regardless of how you go about it. It's... Mm. You know, usually talking to the animals results and them wanting me to help them hunt or something but I guess this time it turned out a bit differently it is always nice when the local fauna can inform you in decision making processes like you know maybe we should find out who wants us to forget the hag or you said oh, something true. about Yeah, uh, someone wants us to uh, avoid helping the hag. So she must have an enemy out there. She didn't mention it, though. Which makes me suspicious. I don't like surprises. And a hag on their own isn't a particularly common sight. To, eh, we might want to be careful for a little while. It'll make a good story, though. If we live to write it, um, I would like you to make a, a perception roll. If we live to write it, <laughs> the Indian in a nutshell. Okay, you definitely see it, but Jin does not notice. Like, there's a guy in a hooded and that seems to be scampering off. Ah, there's a guy over there. What? I think he was watching us, and Otto runs after him. Uh, 
Um, Jin also starts running, even though he has no idea what Otto's talking about. Uh, Otto, what is your speed? Uh, 30. Pretty okay. standard. Okay, uh, you do catch up to them. Uh, they can't go as fast as you. And uh, well, so it's just uh, uh, make a deck save. Both of us? Uh, no, because you're far distance away. Just no. Oh, absolutely not. You can't make me. Um. Well, Jeez. the problem is, is that you fall victim. To a trap this guy had set up, and you trip over here a rope, and because I don't think like it'd be that bad, but it's enough like slows you down, and them to get like about double your speed away while you're dealing with it. So as you're wrapped up and you whack the floor, taking ooh uh, four damage. As you fall to the ground and are tied up in rope. Right. Do I, as I'm running to catch up to him, do I still see this guy? Yeah, like, but again, like, there's auto tied up. You can either deal with that or go after him because you would have enough time to go after him because I think your speed is about 32, correct? Yeah. I'm actually going to, in that case, I'm going to look at Otto and be like, you got it. And then I'm going to go into a rage. Uh, I'm going to go into a rage because as part of the eagle totem that I have, while I'm raging, and since I'm not wearing heavy armor, I can take a dash for my bonus action as well. So I will I'll start sprinting after this guy, dash, double dashing, so I can move uh, 90 feet <laughs> <laughs> in a in a turn. Okay. Um, so I just book it after. Uh, what's your dex modifier? Um, my dex is uh, one. Okay. So it's about even with them. Uh, I will say like uh, you do catch up with them, him, and they try to kind of like make an attack on you. Yeah. Ooh. And I do not think an eight hits you. No, it doesn't. Okay. So it's uh, your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grapple him. I'm going to try to grapple him. Ooh! That's uh, your strength versus their dex. All right. Athletics check. Uh, I'm still raging, right? Yep. So you get advantage okay. on all strength checks. <laughs> I don't think he can even. I don't think even with a crit. Nope. Come here. Uh, Aldo, you're tied up. What would you like to do? Because I uh, think I like you're wanting to do something. Mm -hmm. Right. Auto, I will be you... attempting to cut myself free. Okay. Uh, just make a standard attack roll. Um, you just need a bow of 10. No. That does not work. So you're still... And just for, like, comedy sakes... Uh, there's a banana right there, like you just slip on, <laughs> and that's why, like, you can't seem to get out. Is like you slipped on the banana. Uh, like as you notice, like uh, close to this is like a uh, dwarf. Like on their turn, uh, they are actually going to enlarge to break out. So that's all they can do, but they do essentially just break out of your hold by embiggeting themselves. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to hit you now, aren't I? Oh, ah! like it's like they're just screaming as they're growing bigger. Oh god, he transformed. It's up to you. What would you like to do? It's your turn. Well, I suppose it's time for actual violence. <laughs> so Jin is going to swing his halberd off his back and smack him with it. There's going to be non-lethal damage, but Jin is going to whack him with the halberd and, <laughs> and for his bonus action, just try to clock him. <laughs> so let me roll those attacks. Just regular and then unarmed. The, well, not the Halenberg not, does hit. Like, because for how you're like you're wanting to use the Mage Hand, it just would be the same role as unarmed attack. But the Mage Hand is doing it. Oh no, Mage Hand wasn't me. Can't count spells while I'm raging. Uh, that's uh, since I'm still raging, that's nine points of damage on the first one, and then I. After hitting, after smacking with the halberd, I bring up the uh, the other end of it and try to smack him with it. Because a polearm master, uh, nope, nine doesn't it. And unarmed for your mate champ. I, that was that was a misclick. That wasn't. Oh, okay, my yeah. bad. That was all an illusion. Dang it! You your presentation, even tangled up, is effective. Okay, so again, nine does hurt it. Otto, do you want to try to get out before they try to do something? Uh, yeah, I'll just make a uh, an attempt to untie myself. Just a straight sleight of hand. Or. I'm just going to do that then. Cool. Boom. Okay. That works. Uh, uh, that is, would be your action. Is there any bonus action or movement you would like to do? Uh, stand up. Start heading towards the rapidly developing dwarves. Okay. Uh, since it's enlarged, uh, it's going to try to uh, strike out at Jin. Uh, okay, and does a 24 hit? Hit it. Yep. And that I need to add on, I believe, because of sneak attack is added on there. Uh, 2d6. And yes, I know this will all get halved afterwards. Or it's because you're raged. Isn't it also a D4 because they're large? Oh, thank you. Okay. So, that would be 23 damage in total. Which I'm guessing gets half down to 12. Yeah. Uh, if it's... Uh... It's a bludgeoning, piercing, or a slashing. Yep. It's tabbed. Yep. That's, and uh, it gets another attack because it has multi attack. You said the damage is 12? Uh, yes. And their hmm. next attack miss. All right. Well, here we go. Otto, it's your turn. Um, what about me? Oh, sorry. Jin, sorry. What about me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Sorry. All right. Uh, yep. Another smack, hopefully. Does a 16 hit? Yes, it does. That's max damage plus two from raging, rage damage, which is 15 on the first one. Then oh, okay. bonus action, polar master attack. 
So I bring the other end around for a, another smack. So let me see that really quick, if that's going to hit. 22, that's four plus another two, which is six points of damage. Yeah, dang, you really are beating it up. But unfortunately, it's still standing. I gotcha, I gotcha. Otto. Well, for lack of better options, uh, I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Oh, yeah, give me that that magic missile and that, that wild magic roll. So I really Sorry, give me like a second. You, I'm yeah, casting it as a second level. Yeah. Like, I hope, like, you do enough damage so you do wild magic and that happens after this guy's knocked out. We'll see. Nice. Six. And then a couple of D20 rolls. Damn. Oh my god. That that roll for damage. Okay. Uh, you pass. And do you want to be lethal or non-lethal? Let's go... Lethal on this one. Really, okay. really traumatize Otto. Okay. Uh, as kind of like Otto had just knocked, tried to knock and beaten it down, and from the back, like Otto shoots out of their fingers some magic missiles that explode this guy's head. Oh. Otto just kind of looks horrified at it, at their own hand. That doesn't usually do that. I I was gonna I was gonna question him, but all right. S- suppose that's suppose that's fine. Uh, sorry, it gets away from me sometimes. And then an auto sits down in the alleyway and takes a flask from their many folds of clothes and sips. Right, well, are we going to have to cover up a murder here because this, uh... Huh, right. Interesting. Was, uh, self-defense or whatever. Loot the body. He's he's probably got information somewhere. Loot the body. Have you never been involved in a crime before? Otto. I fight. That's it. I fight. I fight things. Sometimes kill things. And you've never killed a thing that you needed to loot? Don't make an habit of it. I usually let you boys take uh, care of that. <sighs> Give me a minute, I'll be right over. Otto drains the last of their flask, comes up and starts poking through the corpse. I kind of, I kind of put a, kind of put something to cover the, cover the head. Are you just going to try to start looting it before doing anything else? Uh, Is there anything else around? Well, you are in just the sure. regular street right I, now. I, I like, search. there's not people around at the moment, but there I, might I, be soon. I'll do a quick uh, peek around the uh, the road. See if anybody's around. Okay. With the reception, you see kind of like one guard, like they're picking their nose. They're not; um, they haven't really paid attention to things yet. Then, then yeah, I'm gonna drag the body to the side and start poking through pockets. Where's the? Where are we at? Are we able to like carry this body somewhere? 
Uh, yes, you can also just find like a dark alley you could go into, which would be found later. But you can also uh, just kind of go uh, with another place if you have something in mind. All right, up we go. Jin reaches down and scoops up the body and puts it over his shoulder. Quickly. Uh, Otto is going to shapeshift into a random other person and start kind of swaying drunkenly following Jin. Plausible deniability. Okay. Uh, do you plan to just keep walking down the street or do you no, trying to find an alleyway? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do find one. Uh, though, uh, I would like another just perception check from both of you guys. Okay. You notice that there's a trail of blood from the guy leaking out their head the entire way. Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, no, you really screwed the pooch on this one. Sometimes mistakes happen, Jen. Mistakes. It, All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe help. All of this criticism isn't solving the problem. It's all good for me. It's letting me work some things out right now. Jin uh, just Jin just hurries it up. Let's go. I'll I'll be uh, kind of surreptitiously casting prestidigitation on the street behind us to clean up the blood. Just every okay. couple of steps. <sighs> oh. All right. Well. When we get to this alleyway, I put the body on. Otto, you're up. Come on. We need to do this fast. Otto steps up, kind of shaking uncomfortably and starts poking through pockets, trying to avoid looking directly at the uh, the stump. I put something over it. Uh, sure. I'm good with investigation or any other type of role you'd like to make. Uh, gonna start with investigation. I'd also like to make an Arcana check. Okay. Just in case they've got anything weird on them. Uh, you do notice like there is a little bead that looks out of place. That that's something in particular. Like it is around their, around um, like one of their hands, almost like a little bracelet. There's like a little string with a little bead on it. Yeah, I'll definitely be taking that. Arcana? Okay. Uh, uh, this is pretty easy. Uh, what you know is that this is a stored spell. Essentially, this is for those who are not spellcasters to be able to cast a spell. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any sign of who this person was or why they were sent? Uh, you know, like, they are a dwarf, headless, <laughs> and in dark robes. They had uh, a short sword and a hand crossbow. But like, it seems as though they were purposely without a lot of identification on them. Okay. Uh, then I would like to uh, well, steal any ammunition for the crossbow. Um, and then I'm going to press to digitate a small vial of oil dump it all over the body, and then cast Firebolt into it. Okay, oh, I need two rolls there. One on the actual Firebolt, oh, and another on the Wild Magic. Uh, so. fire firebolt is a cantrip. Oh, my bad. Thank you. 
Um, that does, but you also notice that as kind of like because you did not take off the uh, the bracelet, the fire catches on it, and the whole fire of the actual person disappears along with the fire. Auto. We just gotta go, man. So we're worried about a murder. What murder? I, I, Jin just puts his hand on your shoulder, and I'm gonna use uh, pass without trace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're both gonna roll a little stealth check with a plus 10 bonus. And when we leave, we can't be tracked by magical means. And we don't leave behind tracks or any other traces of its passage. So... That's probably for the best. Yeah, and there is no body. It did go and disappear. So It's your stealth bonus plus a plus 10 bonus. So whatever you have for stealth, plus 10. So I'm going to roll that really quick. So you rolled a 22. I'm just going to roll it uh, manually in the advanced roller. Because why not? Uh, yeah, it's see. a 32 for me. Yeah, it's a 32 and a 28. So you do sneak no, mine's away. Is, mine's 18. I yeah. added that to... <sighs> so very, very sneaky. <laughs> so I will give you there is no body at the moment no one there is no evidence leading to it and there might just be a little bit of blood on Jen's back but I think you can pledge to stick just match that away with your hands I just take, I just take the shirt off and I replace it yeah. and uh oh, uh, Meebles, the head got exploded earlier in combat. The body just disappeared because the, the uh, bracelet that contained a spell, uh, uh, in this t case, invisibility, went off by the fire, or just catching on it. So there's a fire that's invisible with a body on it. And... and both of these players have snuck away from anyone thinking it's connected to them if something happens with that invisible fire. If you have to burn your bodies, burning them invisibly is a much better way. It's got to be better for the environment. There's no smoke. There's no smog. It's all invisible. As we all know, if you can't see the problem, it's not really a problem. <laughs> okay. I feel like this is probably a good, like, a stopping point for us all to take a break. Just because I'm not really sure how I can go from that point. Uh, you got rid of a body. So... <laughs> And you got away with it, Scotch clean. I mean, I'm because uh, I'm open for new ideas on what you want to do, but I think we need to uh, take a break so that way we can just at least take a break because I can't stop laughing. <laughs> this is so good. Good job, both of you. <laughs> How to get away with murder.
welcome back. Uh, we have we have the invisible flame going on as our two party members run away from a dead body they'd murdered. And I'd like you both to just roll survival to see if like if you'd notice things off or anything as you're moving around. Okay. Uh-huh. Otto, you notice like there seems to be an unwavering kind of like heat as you guys have walked away and someone just falls out of a window crying ah wonder uh as they fall out of a window of a wooden building at something that's just causing them pain as they're trying to whack it out unsure what it is <laughs> yeah. uh auto still looking like a random stranger on this like drunken person on the street uh screams ah a Durgar! it got away Don't worry about it. Just come with me. And Otto starts hauling back to the office. All right, guess we're uh, going back. Okay. As like you get back to the office, like you notice that the hag is there, are doing their best to look nice, like there's only a single fly on them. Like, they've done their best to make it look neat and nice and as they're at the office. It's just, hello there! Nah. Hello. Didn't didn't expect to see you so soon. Well, I do have a boyfriend I want back, you know, like we're, we're making travel arrangements. Things, things take time. We've got to get clearance. We've got to requisition funds. Well, I'm not big on to that kind of things. Me, well, I just use a transportation ring. Well, that seems like a much more convenient option. If you want to give us a transportation ring, we'd be glad to teleport to your boyfriend and give him your letter. Oh, no, that's a bad idea. If we did that, we'd all be dead. Does he not like surprises? No, 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 no. It's not the case of that. It's, well, my sister had kidnapped him, and he, uh, let's just say that in some aspects, she's the better hag, unfortunately. Uh, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, do you have any defenses against your sister? Well, maybe so, maybe any intra inside information well, might help us get to your boyfriend. Oh yeah, but like, it makes more sense. Like as we're traveling to the moor, like I think like the isn't like the Torlak moor like a really big area. The world is wide. Oh, is it like the math where like Blessed Hell Heath and Stone Ruins along yeah. the eastern base of the Seawall Mountains? Ruins from the time of the Dalarkin Empire, I believe, to dot the moor and subtenal dungeons hide beneath the mire. Members of the Kirk Vulch Clan have spent a great deal of time exploring the area, but the moors are vast, hidden, and hide their secrets well. Indeed. Uh, yeah, we, we can we can work out details on the way. Come on. Uh, let, let's go uh, talk to the travel office. Uh, are you actually trying to do that, or are you trying to just go to Penny's with the hag? Uh, 
Jin, what do you think? I agree with whatever decision you make. That's dangerous. Yeah, let's go to Penny. Okay. And kind of like, again, as you go up to like, very big smile. Hello! Oh! At the side of the hag. I take it this was force upon you. Uh, winking at very specific intervals the entire time. Otto is like, oh, oh no, this was entirely consensual. I mean, we made a very good deal, and uh, uh, she's consulting for us and uh, helping us with some documentation. Um, we'd, we'd like to see about uh, helping book her on our ticket to get to uh, Greenblade. Okay, that seems very odd. Like the hag is saying that very odd. So like they weren't aware of the blade while well, Penny's going. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and just pulls out a blank piece of paper and says, "Ah, uh, yes, a document like this, right?" Oh yeah, absolutely, and uh. Using sleight of hand if I have to, Otto writes, uh, <laughs> got backed into this deal. Any help you can get. Uh, tell BB I did my best. Okay. Like your sleight of hand, I'm going to assume work just because of how well you've been so far. But I'm going to see if their sleight of hand is any good. Because it the, that'll be what determines if this works or not. Oh, that is not like your sleight of hand is so good. But as they go to pick it up, they end up falling, and it shows to the hag like, "Well, that's not a document. That's a note." <laughs> I'm giving you the opportunity. Like you can make this work to your advantage if you come up with something. Oh, no, no. The document is on the other side. Uh, and Otto swaps it for uh, their last pay stub. Okay, that's very odd. Well, oh well. We've been having difficulty keeping track of uh, some of my per diem. Yeah, Penny goes. Not, like, not everything counts. Yeah, like, trust me, like, getting expense accounts from uh, them is horrible. Like, I got to go and file things three times just to make sure the right document, because they use the same document twice. I use a lot of non-conventional means. Sometimes you gotta pay for things that are abnormal. Yeah! Outside like of the normal field of uh, journalistic integrity, sometimes, one might say. And the hag goes, hmm, that doesn't sound like you're doing a proper uh, on their, their documentation there. And just pulls out like one of their own stamps like, I can always help with that with a simple stamp of my own. I am a documenter. Oh, no, no. I keep my own books. You got it. Got the second set back home. It's fine. And then Penny at the, like, second set? I think that sounds like you're going to hear persuasion roll there. Let's see if like the is good enough. Okay, it's good <laughs> enough. <laughs> and kind of like sits down and just says, additional documentation is often required. You can tell like Penny is very nervous and doing their best to kind of like try to make the hag okay. 
the newspaper business is very, you know, very fringe of society. You got to get out amongst the people down, down in the real fundament in the, in the dirt of civilization. Oh, like the mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I take it this is why you have Gert head of all dealings with hags. Gert is useful to have around under various circumstances. If we're lucky, she'll catch up to us in Greenblade. Let's uh, let's go catch that train. Sure. We've got to talk about your uh, your sister's weaknesses or whatever. What? And like, as kind of like you're going, I was like, Penny's going, bye. As you kind of, kind of like are walking the other direction, the hag is just kind of like, but uh, ha, that's a way. And uh, just to put in there for like, you guys are in uh, Krogenberg, where the Moors are kind of like just a continent, like very nearby. If kind of like you want an idea of where. While Greenblade is like, a full like all train ride away so like this is why the hag is having a trouble well kind of like understanding your point of view as they're moving away with you uh, don't worry about it it's uh getting clearance for extracurricular activities yes auto and all of his extracurricular activities he showed me one earlier. <clears throat> Technically, no one saw anything. Oh, of course not. Yeah, no one saw nothing. Nobody, nowhere. Yeah, the hag just agreeing with, we didn't see nothing of no one. No one knows about those sins. No, no. Secrets are meant to be kept. You know what they say about the secrets, right? They're secrets. That's why they're secret. If, exactly. they, were, if they were known, they wouldn't be a secret then. Something's better left unsaid. Exactly, my. My point, right, Otto? Absolutely. People talk too much. <laughs> Especially me. About... <laughs> know what else they say about secrets, Otto? What, what do Two they say? Keep a secret. If one of them is dead. Nah, that's that's a misnomer. Her, if you turn, if you had a necromancer, and you turn one into a corpse. That you got under control. They can keep a secret. Something for me to bookmark. Everyone always forgets about necromancers. I know, right? Like, I, they're the backbone. Like, how do you think so many dead bodies get taken care of if it's not the necromancers? And Jin says all that very ominously before breaking into a smirk and pushing. Auto, auto on the shoulder. I'm messing with you, man. Relax. Relax. Sorry, I've just... Uh... Being back in town is always a little nerve-wracking. Of course. Okay. Uh, just, like, again, like, is your plan to actually go to Greenblade? Because, again, the more is actually closer... Eventually, the plan is to go to Greenblade. Uh, figured we could discuss it, whether to uh, help the hag first or go uh, for the job. Let's flip a coin. Press to digitate a coin. Oh, a coin, eh? Do, uh, do we want to help the where are we going? But chance, random randomosity. Oh, I'd like to if I'm in here, 
I will put it into note if my boyfriend isn't helped out that I the documents and stuff I filed with and the Barb Devil are invalid and then they would come after you. <laughs> All right. Well then to the Moors. That seems like a, a better option. That's uh you know what love conquers all the the for love yeah <clears throat> okay. yeah okay for love or whatever <laughs> i take it you are not happy dealing with me i just <laughs> don't understand the love Never really needed it. Never really happened for me. Well, so, does it does it help that they're a unicorn? I, sh I, uh, yeah, sure. I don't. Uh, no. Okay. No. Okay, I. You know how the, you regular people have looks to be the highest value in someone. Because they radiate and well, for me, it's magic. And the magic off a of unicorn, that would probably be equivalent to like uh, a fire genasi hot. Okay, well. I don't. Now, you can see why like it's a value to me now. now yeah. Like, no, no, I'm, pick, I'm, pick, I'm picking up what's being put down. Yeah. And, no confusion. Okay. I, 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 there just seems to be a, this hostile energy of where, like, you don't really want to help me out. He's a, he's very brusque. Isn't that right, Jen? Stalwart sort. Right. Stalwart sort. I have no idea what that means, but I'm going to consider that to be good. Pretty sure we don't either. Either way. Otto okay. leans into Jin. Please, I don't want a barbed devil to kill me. Or worse. There's so much worse. They could do worse. Let's rock and roll. Ah! You know exactly on my ride. Mm -hmm. I do. And, and as kind of like they come out, like you uh, see kind of like outside the building, they have this very moss covered or what looks very much like a rock elemental Oh, with like, like a big kind of like open carriage kind of thing that's all around this rock that kind of just walks around like almost like a little uh, uh, robot, I would think. It's just like, imagine like it's like a golem. Like it's all made out of rock with just lots of grass and all that with like a little stairs to walk up and, and allow it to. So... You like rock and roll? Oh, that was that was more of a saying. I just want to, you know, move. Um, but sure, why? Why not? Mm -hmm. What do you got? What do you got? Okay. And. As kind of like you get into it, it actually looks quite contrast to what you would imagine. And much like kind of like the hag themselves look really gross, everything inside it actually looks really fancy. Like I even think like over the top, like cushions that are really comfortable. There's even a little mini bar in there of wines and cheese and breads. Auto turns to Jen and is just like, so is this like 
Is this like riding inside of a horse for you? I don't. What? What? How? How do things work for Earth Elementals? I'm an Earth Genasi. Which are descended from elementals. Listen, we're a bit, we're a little different, but let's move past that. Well, I'm not saying that like that's your cousin or anything. I'm just like, is this a, what kind of life is that to you? Well, I don't know what that kind of life is, but I grew up in a clan of Earth Genasi who worshipped dragons. So our way of doing things oh, is yeah. decidedly out of bounds. Yeah. I'm one of the few that came to the big city. Oh, fancy! Yeah, my, my parents thought so, too. Oh, uh, is that over, like, this near the islands, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my. Well, I'd say the name, but it's actually quite complicated. Oh, okay. So I take it it's nowhere near Shargon's teeth. Actually, <laughs> actually don't know about that one. Uh, DM. I, I, cause I can't remember. Like I, I just had found like on the break an interactive map. Because uh, I think, like you like you said, was the Caprian Islands, right? Where like a lot of the dragons were, or it was another island. I just oh no, uh, Arganesson. Oh, that's on the other side. Hey, that's closer to the Sea of Rage. Yeah, yeah, they are not. Sure. Yeah. Are. Ganesson. My uh my home where I'm from. Lots of dragons. Well, lots of dragon worship there, a few dragons. Come a ways away. Hopefully some good dragons. Oh, there kidding me. All dragons are good. I feel like you had had a sheltered life. I mean, I wasn't really anywhere to go till I came here. I came here, what? Uh, oh, it's been a couple of years now. Let's see, I'm 27. One, two. Oh, one, five, yeah. Six, seven. And I, I get it. You were part of the whole the last war chaos. Yeah, it, it did a whole lot to everyone. Long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I know, there's one truth I know about this life, and that's that all dragons are good dragons. I'm I kind of feel like I should say something, Otto. Would it be rude for me to insert some truth here, or will I get smacked for it? Yeah, speak your words. Okay, a lot of times that can be true, but I've found that oftentimes it's not. Like, if you got a color, oftentimes, yeah, there's a good chance of being good. Yes, there's some bad red dragons out there but most part it's if they're after a metal like if you get on those silver dragons that's when like I've found some problems those have, there's not been some good things with them mm. nah, I'm kind of on Jin's side with this one dragons are awesome <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's a good point of where we could just end it on. It's just like, yeah, dragons are awesome. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Like, Fuck yeah, dragons. Awesome. Yeah, they're dragons. Nothing wrong. I, it's all fine. <laughs> I respectfully disagree. All dragons are awesome. 
right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the red ones are mean, but they breathe fire, and that's cool as hell. I, I think there's a difference between cool and something that will actually utterly destroy you. Yeah. Jin will have a decidedly narrow view of dragons. <laughs> They're all good. Uh, they, they all have their reasons. Yes. All of them. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys. Jin is, uh, Jin's belief in dragon is so strong. He he has a dragon totem instead of an eagle totem. Do you understand? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. How heavy he believes. He gets his powers from a totem of dragons. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, let, let's go around. Like We have our raid cry. Dragons are awesome. So that's one off the tick list. Uh, let's go around and do our favorite moments. Uh, Jin, uh, what would you say is your favorite moment and where we can find you? Boy, murdering that dude in the alley was pretty, uh, that was a pretty, pretty great debacle. Pretty, uh, pretty savage, auto. Pretty, pretty savage. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at L T A L. I G. That's at L T A L I G. You also find me on Twitch. Well, Twitch name is so long that I don't spell it out or say it. So good luck. Uh, Otto, what is your favorite moment and where can we find you? Torn between murdering that dude in the alley and setting invisible fire to that alley so like that that whole scene is just is fine uh basically the only place you're liable to find me is here again friday for where things go south uh we're starting up uh, another mystery this next week and things should be exciting i cause it i'd like to say that i did indeed cause that indeed it should be uh, fun. We're going to go with fun. Yes, fun. It's fun. Nothing to worry about. Sometimes fun burns. We prove that. Like, And there will be zero bad consequences for it. Sometimes fun burns. I feel like that should be the great cry now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there are so many good ones. Like uh, I'm Michael Wayne. Uh, you can find me at Michael Wayne on Twitter. Uh, uh, also on Twitch, I've been testing out doing that ever so often with uh, streams of Horizon Zero Dawn and uh, Rad. Uh, most part, like you can find me here and there. I'm looking to play a game with everyone. Maybe one day I'll get to play with you. Uh, remember, we're all in this together. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for watching our wonderful cast. Everyone who may be uh, donated, subscribed, or follow. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for our spon sponsors, Fun, the Mental RPG and Grinding Coffee Company. Remember, you can get 13% uh, off uh, your order at grindingcoffee.co. I may have said a uh, com last time. Sorry about that. Using the code Raven, R A V V Y N. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the great game. And I think like uh, Raven's probably going to think of someone good to raid. It, well, we enjoy all of you good people. Thank you so much. And I think we'll hand it off to Raven. Yeah, thank you so much. That was Raven. great. Oh, I just realized you you all can't hear me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much. That was great. Yeah, we're going to go on a raid. Um, before we do that, once again, thank you to Michael for running the game, uh, the cast for being amazing, uh, and everybody that was hanging out and chat with us. Appreciate it very much. And we're going to go raid uh, Susanna Grace. Um, she's playing uh, Sea of Thieves right now. Um, 
because she's a lot of fun to watch play games uh, and she has a lot of really cool tabletop stuff as well so give her a follow if you're not doing so already and then uh, be sure to come back by here uh, at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for Empire's Epitaphs and, uh, and we'll see you then. Okay, bye everybody.